guys, it's Kristen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am back with another sit down video and today I'm going to be talking about how to get an A in your anatomy class. So if you are new here on my channel, you probably don't know this, but I recently graduated from the University of Georgia this past May with my degree in exercise science where I had to take two anatomy classes and I currently am in my very first semester of my Doctor of Physical Therapy program at Mercer University right here in Atlanta. So like I said, I just finished up my midterm exams and on top of midterms, I have also taken a bunch of exams overall this semester with anatomy related content on them because a lot of my classes, even though it's not my gross anatomy course, it still is applying anatomy knowledge and bringing that in to other classes if that makes sense. So I've acquired a ton of tips and tricks that I thought would be useful to share with you guys because I know a lot of my subscribers, especially recently, are either physical therapy students, pre-physical therapy students, or just healthcare professionals in general. So I thought this would be fun to make for you guys. Before I get started with my tips, I just wanted to say that this is what works for me personally. And I think that is really important to say because everyone learns differently, everyone has different learning styles, and what works for them. So I am a visual learner, so I love lots of pictures and lots of colors, and yeah, that's how I learn best. But you might learn better, say, talking out concepts with a friend. Cannot do that. Does not work for me. I'm way too social of a person. I get too distracted. But I just want to say, this is just what has helped me take all of these tips with a grain of salt. If you're struggling in, that, in anatomy, I think all of these resources will help you and are worth trying, but really at the end of the day, it comes down to finding out what works for you, and I hope some of these tips can help you figure that out. And also, I know I titled this video How to Get an A in Anatomy just because that's what I wanted to title this video, but the end result, the end goal should not be to get an A. It should be to truly, truly learn the material. There's been times when I've gotten, say, I don't know, a 75 on a test and then a 100 on another test, but I know way more about the material I got a 75 on than I got a 100 on. So that's been a big change I've had to make in PT school as well, just kind of shifting my mindset to, okay, the grade doesn't matter as much as do I know this material, will I be able to apply it, and will I be able to help my patients. And that also makes studying a little more easier, more fun, and more rewarding rather than just working for a grade, which at the end of the day, your GPA doesn't matter in grad school. So yeah. All right, so let's get started with the video. So number one, my biggest, most important tip for doing well in anatomy is do not try to cram the information. I needed to tell myself this three years ago when I took anatomy in college because I don't know if your schools work this way, but when I took anatomy in undergrad, we would have four tests, about 20% each, totaling to 100% of your grade. And I kind of would wait until the week before the test to study and then try to memorize every single muscle in the body in a week. And that just does not work. And I don't know why I thought it would work. I ended up getting okay grades. I think I got a B in both anatomies in college, but that is just not an effective way to study at all, particularly if you are in grad school and actually need to be studying to retain the information rather than just for a grade to pass a class. So the way that my anatomy class in PT school is structured, we have a quiz every single Friday except if we have an exam that Friday. So we either have a quiz or a test every Friday. So that, although it sounds terrible, it is honestly a blessing in disguise because it just forces you to study a little bit every single day. And learning every muscle in the body it doesn't feel as overwhelming when you split it into one, two, maybe three muscles a day. So if your school isn't set up that way, I highly recommend just kind of making a schedule for yourself and splitting up the material, setting deadlines, and just splitting it up and working piece by piece by piece. My second tip is to get an app or some sort of online software that is kind of like a virtual dissector type thing. So I'm going to share some with you now. So my school actually pays for us all to have accounts on the software Visible Body. So that is something you can look into purchasing. I think it is kind of pricey though, so maybe not. But basically what it is 
I'll insert a clip now showing the website while I'm speaking, but Visible Body, basically you can go through and dissect muscles, remove muscles, and just kind of quiz yourself. So you really truly are learning the muscles in context. So I think that makes all of the difference. If you are just trying to memorize the origin insertion of a muscle without actually looking at the muscle, like say on the arm or something, it just is not going to make any sense. But for me now, if you say biceps brachii in my head, I am envisioning the visible body dissector and the biceps like lighting up bright blue and I can envision and remember where the origin and insertion is. It is a lot of memorization, but it also is just kind of reasoning through. And I think that has been something that has helped me a ton is kind of realizing it's not just pure memorization, it makes sense. So I have my iPad here and a free app that I found recently is called 3D Human. And again, I will insert a screen recording here, but basically it is like the visible body dissector, but it is completely free. So I honestly don't use it that much because I have the more extensive one through my school, but if I ever wanna look at something on my iPad, this is a great option. So kind of going off of that, definitely you want to use a visible body type dissector app, but you also want to make sure you have a very good textbook. So I have this textbook. It is the Atlas of Anatomy book, third edition by Anne Gilroy, and it came with a hole in it even though it was new, but I was too lazy to return it. So that's what we're working with, but having a good atlas is really, really critical because everything you need to know it's right here within these pages and it's just another good resource to have. Um, the more resources the better honestly because muscles look different depending on where you're looking at them on for example. I know that was really confusing but when I look at them at my atlas versus the 3D human app versus the visible body dissector versus down in cadaver lab they all will look a little bit different so it's good to get as many different looks at the material as possible, at least for me. Next up, I have my anatomy coloring book. I got this on Amazon. I believe it was about $30. It is by Win Capit. I will have it linked down below. But I actually got this in undergrad, didn't really use it, and then I recently rediscovered it. And it was particularly helpful when I was trying to study the foot muscles for my exam recently. But basically, you just colored the muscles and it really helps you to see especially the deep versus superficial muscles because that I think in undergrad was where I went wrong and where I struggled is I didn't really understand deep versus superficial muscles. So this book has really helped me and I recommend it because if you're studying really hard for, for a test and you feel like you just need a break, you can just sit at your desk, play some coffee, listen to a vlog, listen to a podcast, and just color, and you're still studying. I think a lot of people don't realize that studying doesn't just have to be sitting at a desk, like, looking at flashcards. It can be a ton of things. It can look like a ton of different things, such as coloring. So, get a coloring book. So, my next tip is in regards to how to particularly study for bigger lecture exams. So, I've talked about how I study in a ton of my vlogs before, but real quick, I'll just summarize it. I'm sorry if you watch my videos and have heard me say this a bajillion times, but I'm going to again overlay a screen recording of my iPad so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But basically what I do is I take notes. We actually have recorded lectures this semester due to COVID, but I take notes directly on my PowerPoint slide like so, inserting a screen recording here. But I just kind of scribble down every little thing my professor says on the slides. And then after that, I will go back and make myself a study guide that looks a little something like this. Again, just kind of organizing it a way I like, inserting pictures that are more beneficial to me. And like I said, I am a visual learner, so making things kind of aesthetic and cute and colorful and remember... Rememberful? Is that a word? I don't know. Just... It's how I'll remember the information is what I'm trying to say. But again, this is just what works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, that's totally okay. Just find out what works for you. So that is how I study anatomy, particularly how I study effectively for anatomy to kind of retain the information 
for the long term and I really really hope that this video helps you guys and if you did enjoy this video you should totally subscribe down below and leave any video requests that you may have and I'd be more than happy to do them for you guys and I'll talk to you guys in my next video on Thursday. Bye friends!